All right, everyone. Welcome to another Weekend No Show. My name is JG. I'm here with my boy, CL Smooth. What's up, man? What's good, family? Back in the house. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, Ebony Blade is out on another secret mission doing his own thing. You know, thing, Ebony so. Blade, man, he'd he be on these secret missions, man. We, we can't yeah. really, we don't know where he is and we can't tell you where he is, man. But, you know, he'll be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll definitely be back. You know, who who knows? Who knows what he's up to? It's better not to know. <laughs> better not to know. <laughs> yeah. So in, in uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about sports stars, some of their altercations with fans, and uh, just the, the, uh, the issues surrounding that. And then we're going to go on and talk about a man who was caught by the FBI for attempting to be a hitman. But first, uh, I want to get into the sports situation, Smooth. What's going on, man? Yeah, man. So, you know, this is nothing new, but it has gotten a little more of the spotlight, so to speak, uh, in recent years. It's just um, altercations and issues with fans. Now, we, we saw it uh, in, in previous years with, like, um, LeBron and, uh, you know, a, a man and his wife, his wife, I think got a little tipsy at a game and started, you know, saying disrespectful things to LeBron. And, you know, a couple of players have had fans actually ejected from NBA games. Um, I, you know, if you may not even known that was a thing, you know, if, if fans get unruly, they can be ejected. Um, so there's been a couple of incidents. So let me, let me just, I want to, I want to, give you some some context on a couple of incidents um, that, yeah. that have happened in the last few weeks and that we can kind of get into, you know, is, is there something deeper going on? So so sure. uh, the first one I want to talk about is uh, Russell Westbrook, who is a guard now. He plays for the for the L.A. Clippers. He's a Hall of Fame caliber player, but he's kind of a, a polarizing figure. Um, he's, he's loved and hated around the league and by fans for various reasons. And he's, you know, the last couple of years, he's had some down seasons. It hasn't been his greatest his greatest moments and people started calling him West Brick, right? His, his name is Russell oh. Westbrook and they call him West Brick because unfortunately the brother Damn. has a hard time shooting the ball consistently. Oh, that's messed <laughs> so, up. So, you know, I mean, and, you know, sp- uh, sports can be uh, aggressive. It could be a little cruel, right? It could be in your face. I think all of us who are athletes, we, we understand that. Um, but what happened with West- Westbrook is there was a, uh, a nationally known kind of sports commentator, uh, Skip Bayless, who who popular, popularized the term of West Brick and used to clown him, you know, daily on his show. And it just got to a point where, you know, Westbrook and his wife were saying, look, man, our, our kids are getting harassed at school. Um, you are is going beyond just like um, kind of fan, you know, going back and forth with players. You you are disrespecting our family name. Right. Yeah, like you are you are disrespecting our name. And he's asked people to stop it and it come out pretty strongly against it. And, you know, people keep keep doing it. So that's that's a little bit of context on him. Now, what happened recently was they're in the playoffs. Um, the Clippers are against the Phoenix Suns. And I think I, I'm not sure if it was at halftime or some type of break. Westbrook is coming from the back. Right. The locker rooms and cutting through a shortcut in the arena which takes him through kind of like a, a VIP lounge for, for fans where, you know, they can get food and drink and, you know, they got couches and TVs and stuff like that. Right. Um, right. But, but it's, but it's a shortcut for him to get back to the, to the bench, to the court. Anyway, it's Phoenix Suns fan. So he goes through here and some dude probably drinking uh, there with his kids and his family starts calling him West brick. And Russ was like, Hey, yo, watch your motherfucking mouth, man. Watch your mouth. And the guy keeps going at him, keeps going at him. Now, luckily, there was security escorting Westbrook through there anyway. That's kind of just a protocol. And, and he kept it cool and kept it moving. Um, but the guy was like, take it like a man. Take it like a man. You know, if you're going to talk about it, be about it. Now, look, man. Okay. Look, um, by NBA standards, Westbrook is not a big dude. He's about he's about my height. He's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, um, like, well built dude, like you know, like for average dude, you don't really want to f with this dude. Now the guy talking all this ish, like you, you. I, I, let me just tell you something. He he, not about it. Okay, <laughs> you can watch the video and you can look at this dude. You like this dude is not about it. And so anyway, anyway, I'll, I'll hold off on my feelings on it. But but 
you know, they they diffused the situation, but of course it was all in the media. And, you know, did Westbrook over um, overreact? And it's just fans going back and forth. And why is he getting upset about his name? Blah, blah, blah. blah. So that's that's one incident. The second incident that's, that happened um, before the playoffs started was Bradley Beal, who was a guard for the, uh, the Washington Wizards. He's coming off the court after a game the Wizards have lost. And <laughs> a fan says to him, yells at him, you cost me 1300 bucks, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and so this is the other issue. What has happened recently in recent years is the NBA and other sports have allowed gambling to take a, a more prominent hold uh, as part of the sports thing, you know, sports betting. It used to be very frowned upon and separated, but now it's, it's you know, it's another revenue stream for these, for these sports leagues. So you've got fans in there who are not just simply watching the game as fans of, you know, of the teams. They got money on the line. And of course, you know, fans are drinking in the arenas, alcohol and stuff like that. And so, I mean, you know, you, you losing money on a bet, I don't know if I'm missing a jump shot. You might get upset, <laughs> you know? But here's what happened. You cost me 1300 bucks, motherfucker. Bill turns is like, what? And he, he went up and he smacked the guy's hat off or his head or something like that. I think, I think the guy had a hat and he smacked his head off, hat off and, and, he, and he said something like, you know, um, I don't have the exact quote of what, what he said. Um, but, it, you know, it was just kind of like, you know, what you have a problem? You have a problem? Something like that. Um, the, but the problem was the dude that he smacked was the guy's friend. He didn't say nothing. Oh, and so now that, no. that guy is suing Beal, I think, for assault for like 50000 So the guy. So 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 people watch your friends out there. They'll get you into some shit. Um, <laughs> The, guy, well, we, the guy's we know. friend, the guy, well, we do know that the guy's friend says some wild shit. He gets smacked up, um, and now you know there's it's it's probably going to be settled out of court. But you know there's some legal action taking place at this point. So that's kind of the context of it, um, and you know things like that have been happening more frequently. I wanted to, wanted to see what you thought about that, JG. I know you're not a you know a huge into the sports realm, but still there's other issues bubbling here that that you may have a perspective on. But but do you think the first guy, Westbrook? Who, mm-hmm. who called him West Brick? Do you think maybe he had a, a an ulterior motive, like make this guy mad, make him make him hit him? And I mean, do you think that's it, or or is he just talking crap? I mean, that's it seems like point. it's so reckless that he's he's just like, yeah, please let this guy hit me. It doesn't matter. That that's a good point. I let me tell you, I I think we're gonna we're gonna be moving into an era beyond sports where people in general are looking for ways to get paid, right? Um, and if that means instigating some shit, <laughs> they'll do it. Yeah. I, don't, I, 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 I don't think that this was the case, because I think the guy was just, he's a Phoenix Suns fan. He was sitting back there eating and drinking with his family, and Westbrook came in, and I think he was just being an obnoxious fan and yelling out shit and acting like a, a clown. You know, and he's got his young kids. Like his kids are young. I mean, you can see that. I mean, what are they like? Look like like nine, ten years old or something like that, sitting there. You know, um, so I don't. I don't think he. I, short answer. I don't think he had an ulterior motive. I think he was just being a disrespectful person. And um, and I, I'm guessing he he probably had a couple of drinks too. So, I mean, what really strikes me is is since I'm not per se a sports fan, I'm really I'm really only there. For the good stuff, I, I see the 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 great uh, write ups of LeBron and people like that, the big mega stars who are doing yeah. these great things, and then you forget about the other side of the coin when they're not doing so good. When they th- this is the crap they got to deal with. When when the adoration is gone, or if you're if you're not doing so well for the team, and now those people turn on you, and it, you know, it strikes me like how much uh, you you feel like, oh, these guys are making all this money. They just got to deal with it. This is that's just part of the game. But they're people, too. Like, damn, how much abuse are you supposed to just put up with abuse? Just well, we because. Don't, yeah. yeah. We, we don't realize because we don't we don't live those lives. So, we, you know, it's it's the old thing, man. Can you put yourself in someone else's shoes? And 
And yeah. in our society, man, we don't care about nobody else's shoes. All we care about <laughs> is ourselves, right? Yeah. And so just imagine, man, these these people can't go anywhere without being recognized or asked for an autograph or expected to be on performance, right? You know, I've read about uh, another star out of Miami, Jimmy Butler, who, who, who had made a comment. He's like, man, you know, I'm just out to lunch with my young daughter, you know, trying to spend some time with her and people come up to me for autographs and ask me, you know, and it's like, I don't want to be an asshole, but I'm just like, man, I'm having time with my daughter. How, how would you feel if you were constantly harassed, you know, people expecting something from you? Well, you're a star, you get paid all this money. Hey man, I'm a human being, I'm living my life, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Th- th- there's, just, there's just a line. There's a line, man. And, you know, like just just like you you wouldn't want people coming up to your job wherever it is that you work and be like, "Oh man, you're a bum. You're a terrible accountant. What the <laughs> fuck's wrong with you, dog? You cost me thirteen hundred bucks on my taxes last year, motherfucker." Yeah. But you know, I mean, you know, because it's sports and it's entertainment, we 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 extend the line of what we can say and do a little bit more. But damn, at some point, man, like we're human beings too, you know. That's one thing. I feel like there's something that that people either have it or you don't, where you can understand that this is not a time I should bother this guy. Yeah. And and re- remember a couple years ago, or was it even last year, where that girl tried to put Denzel Washington on blast, and he was sitting with his wife having dinner, and she ran up on him and said, "Hey, can I get a picture?" And without even waiting, she leaned yeah. in and snapped a picture. And then he said, hey, you're supposed to wait for the answer before you do that. And right. then she tried to put him on blast like he was very mean. And really, nobody was having that. They were like, hey, yeah. the man is having dinner with his wife. If you, if you ask a question, wait for the answer. And I just, you know, that's a kind of a line that, I mean, I definitely wouldn't cross. If, if they were out, if I saw some celebrity, I'm trying to think of who I would care to approach. But if I saw a celebrity and it was it was part of their they were out at a uh, event and this is, you know, they're on. This is their job. I'd be like, hey, you know, hey, how's it going or whatever. If they're at a Comic-Con or something, then you can shout out, hey, man, you know, how's it going or something. But come on, people. It's like uh, uh, so many times you hear about actors and their girlfriends and the girlfriend will, will say that. Just women just run up. They ignore them. They run up to the to the guy. <laughs> yeah, and it's well, like it's totally, incredible. totally dis- disrespectful, man. Disrespectful. I, actually, I, I I met a couple of well, I've met I met a, quite a few actually pro athletes. Um, I met Charles Barkley once. I was in Min- Minneapolis and um, coming out of this night spot, and him and a couple other players were going into this restaurant, and I was there with with the uh, aunt and uh, a couple other people. And we're like, oh shit, Charles Barkley. What's up, Charles? You know how you doing? Da da da. Shook his hand. Hey, fellas. It's just, it was, it wasn't even thirty seconds, man. But very cordial, very nice. And he went on about his business. We weren't like, you know, we look. I'm a grown ass man. I'm not. I'm not trying to stop him. You know, getting an right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like I, I respect you and shit, but keep it pushing. <laughs> um, and then that actually that same night in the club we were in, there was a bunch of uh, uh, ball players there that night. That I guess they, they must have had a game. Either the next day or the or, or that night, I couldn't couldn't remember. But you know, we chatted them up, and um, and you know, they were all cool, and it was it was all good. But I had one experience. I was in Chicago. And it was kind of interesting, and I was at just some random store uh, with some girl I was dating at the time, and um, I looked outside. And I was like, "Oh shit, that's Bill Cartwright." And this this is, he wasn't no superstar, but he was a big seven foot tall dude uh we used to play for the bulls <laughs> and i think they had just won the title with, with mike uh back in the day and so i went outside i was like oh hey hey bill Cart- cartwright and i was like hey man how you doing you know fan and he looked at me crazy right and i was like i was like bill i don't, I don't want nothing from you man i don't want an <laughs> autograph nothing just just a fan want to congratulate you on the championship dog <laughs> that was it he, he got me up and, and he was he was mad awkward you know but um, he, he was waiting for that other foot to to drop, other yeah, shoe yeah, to but, drop. But I mean, yeah. like I said, I'm a you know, people are different. I, I I don't want nothing from you. I was just like, hey man, I'm, I'm a sports fan, and you know, yeah, uh, congratulations. That that was it. But as I thought about it later, the reason I bring it up, I'm like, this dude's just living his life, running errands and shit. He don't know who I am, what I want, what the. Yes, how many, that's... T- how many times a day do do 
does he get that kind of stuff, man? You know, so we got to be more, I don't know, understanding of, of other human beings, I think. Well, I, yeah, I think, too, some of these guys, they they think that these, these uh, maybe they think the stars are so aware that they can be sued that they're not going to do anything. And sometimes I, I feel like they must be thinking, oh, crap, I really messed up now. Here he comes. Like, here comes the dude. He knocked the hat off, off of, uh, you know, the wrong dude. But maybe they're thinking, hey, he's not going to do anything to me because I'll sue. Then they get that ass whooping and they're like, oh, man. That, that, that's know? a great point, man. Now, now folks, don't, don't come at me because this was years and years ago and I'm, I'm not 100%. I have to check the, the story. But I, I think Barkley got into it with some fans back in the day. He might have thrown the motherfucker through the window. I don't know. I, 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 I vaguely remember that story. Um, but the point you raise is really important one because all these people, that guy who's like, you know, calling him Westbrook, Westbrick to his face. I mean, I'm like, dog, it's one thing to be in the stands, right? But it's another thing like, like this dude is like 10 feet from you, man. You yeah. know, at the end of the day, he's a man. Like what, 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 what guy wants to be disrespected like that, man? And you can only take so much. You only, you can only take yeah. so much, man. Take it like a man. Take it like like you are disrespecting this dude's manhood in a way. <laughs> but but you made an excellent point because I think these fans th- there's a certain line and like this guy, this dude is is right there in your face like he's just go, going to the court. You're disrespecting his manhood, but it means you're weak. It means you're soft. Why? Because you know he can't do anything really. You know, he's yeah. just, because he'll get sued, he'll get kicked out of the league, all this old crazy stuff, lose millions and millions of dollars. What'll happen to you? You get 15 minutes of fame. So all these fans are like this dude in Phoenix, like, I'm sorry, dog. You're a disgrace, man. You embarrass yourself in front of your kids, man. I hope your kids grow up and be like, damn, my, my, my dad is whack. You know, that you're you know, not it, tough, it, man. Yeah. You're not tough doing that. You yeah, that, that's something that I'm thinking that from a kid's perspective, from from a nine or ten year old kid perspective, it might have been funny. As they yeah. grow up, they're gonna be like, "This shit wasn't funny." Your pops is soft, cuz your pops is soft, man. That's what that means, because you're not just. It's not just fandom where like you're booing the other team and and you're in the stand. Like this this grown man is ten feet from you. He's not even playing the game. He's walking to the, and you are disrespecting him in his face in front of your family. So like, like, how's he supposed to respond to that? You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't, I don't well, like that type of stuff. No, I don't. I don't like it either. <laughs> and it's 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 also that um, just sports in general. It is so. I don't know if I should say contentious, but but no, contentious is not the right word. I just mean that it means so much to people, and yeah. they can they can just turn on a dime. And I, I've just seen it my entire life. And it's just, it's interesting to me because I, I'm not that way, but you yeah. can't deny that people put something of themselves into this. You know, it's, it's my team. That's my team. And I'm, I'm rooting for my team. And then if they feel like somebody on the team is, you know, has, has lost the game for them or, or is making the, the team look bad, then they feel like they can just say whatever they want and belittle people it's just man i some of the most vicious attacks come from these supposed fans yeah i mean you hear about that especially like in europe and they get wild over over their soccer what they call football over there you know you, yeah. all kinds of fights and people getting jacked up and stuff like that but what's funny is man i love sports i mean i love playing it i love it but i've never been like a fan where you know what i mean like fanatical about any team or any player you know what i'm saying i don't because to me, that's almost like there's something missing in you to a certain extent. And so you are identifying with something outside of yourself to make yourself feel better. I'm not saying don't support your team, right? You know, support the city you're from. I'm not saying that. But I think there's a line where people get to violence over, you know, it's the Celtics, not the Knicks, it's the Lakers. Like, motherfucker, ain't nothing of them paying you. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> you know? Why, why are you so, um, why are you so like your life is, is tied up in this team? And it's because, and it's because, man, this is why I wanted to bring this topic to you because there's so much deeper than just the sport of it. It's the psychology and maybe the sadness in, in parts of human life where 
they are identifying with this thing outside of themselves because they're not happy within themselves. That's why they get so angry about that shit. That's why they're so disrespectful, you know, to these other people, you know, because they they get disrespected at work or in life or whatever, and they need to take it out on someone. I guess that's where I'm I'm going with it, man. You know, has there been any um, consequences for that guy in the in the Westbrook case? Because sometimes you know people they find these people, they out them, they put their name out, and and has there been anything like that? I don't think so. not not that I've heard, and I doubt it because I not enough happened. If there had been a physical altercation, then, you know, this, this thing would have escalated, but it okay. was pretty quick and it didn't escalate beyond the words and stuff like that. Um, and so it hasn't, it hasn't gone any further than that. Um, the, the Bradley Beal one is going to, I doubt it goes to court. He's going to have to pay. I means unfortunately I understand like, and, and what Bill said was like, when, because by, by saying you cost me 1300 bucks, you're, you're, you're almost implying in the sports world, like what you you saying? I'm th- I threw the game. You say I'm not. Be- you know, you're questioning his integrity about what he does. And what he says, like this is my profession. I take this personally and seriously, man. You know, don't don't be implying that that I'm costing you money because I don't have nothing to do with your gambling. I'm here to ball, you know, type of thing. Right. I think that that's what made him mad. But his problem was, and this is the thing, man. Look, <laughs> sometimes sometimes a motherfucker need his ass whooped, but <laughs> but. <laughs> But the problem with the problem with violence, man, the problem with violence, whether it's individuals or the state exercising it, is what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? And in this case, Bradley Beal hit the wrong dude. Yeah. You know, it's like his friend was talking shit as, as, based on reporting. This dude wasn't doing anything. You know, so now his maybe, friend didn't step up and say I was the one. He just let his friend take a potential ass whooping. You know, because dude, or did it happen this, that quick? This, this is my point. All these, all these cats are soft. They mm-hmm. are soft, man. I don't care how big or physically tough you are. When, when you talk stuff to another person, knowing they can't do something to you, r- really, yeah. right? Yeah. You are soft, man. You know, you there's no bravery in that. There's nothing to be proud of in that. You know, you're you're soft, and I mean that in all the most negative ways possible. I really, <laughs> I really don't like that type of shit, man. You know, yeah, it's some weak ass shit. It's weak. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. So, anyway. so then is he getting? Is is Bradley Beal? So is the the team or the league doing it? What happens in that situation? Does he get fined, or does he get well, suspended? Or? Typically, what happens is, of, of course, the league and the team investigate the incident. <clears throat> Um, because it's it's become a legal matter, what they will probably do is allow the legal process to run itself out. So either, you know, either it'll go to court. Um, now, I don't think there's it's not legal in the sense. I don't think the police are involved in terms of like he's not being charged with anything. I don't. So this is I a civil think, case, probably. Yeah, I, I mean, because you know, if the guy is 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 suing him for money, because I think look, I think he he knocked his head hat off. You know, um, I don't think he did any physical damage, but yet, but still, it, the the law is, you cannot touch someone without their consent. And if I mean, you do, yeah, if you it, do, that's assault. I mean, I could just barely assault. flick you with my finger. That's that's assault. It, it's but, assault. But I don't think the, cop, the cops are going to do anything. So, but he's he's going for he's going for the money. I just don't think if if I talked, I mean, even if my friend talks shit and then the guy knocked my hat off, I just don't see myself. Um, going and getting a lawyer, and I mean, I, I mean, if I was punched in the face or something, or and and yeah. you know, nose broken or something, then then that's okay, one that's one thing. But especially, I, I if I didn't say it, somebody came up and and they were mad at somebody else. They they knocked my hat off. I'd be like mad and embarrassed. But I don't see myself going and suing for that. I don't know. I just don't see me doing yeah. that <laughs> see see the dude the dude's friend who was talking all the shit he's super soft he's my, what we call charm and soft right yeah <laughs> this dude this dude is let's his know. friend take take the i mean he should have been stepping in front of him and be like hey man i was the one who said that but but the guy but the guy suing the guy suing bill because because now if other facts come out that we're not aware of, we may have to change our stance but it just kind of sounded like he he knocked his hat off type of thing he didn't he didn't really do anything but at the same time, you know, 
if I'm the dude, I, I think what you do is is you accept an apology. Bill probably does something for you, right? He, I mean, he probably is like, hey, man, look, I, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have, you weren't the guy. I shouldn't have hit you and stuff like that. Let me get you some tickets to the game or something, whatever. But to, to, for him then to sue Bill for 50K, this is this is my point, JG. Man. Yeah, man, I, I don't like it. Society is trying to get something for nothing based off their own bad behavior, man. It's I man, it's it's sad. It's sad, man. Yeah, so, nah, it is I weak. I don't man. think he should get paid for that. No, hell no. No. I mean, I it's like you said, like like square it up, squash it, be like, hey man, you know, it, it wasn't me. And you know, like you said, here, give me here's some tickets, yo. Okay, cool. Squashed. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's some bitch shit right there. Yeah, it's it's uh it's terrible. And I know I've said this on other pods, man, but I just I feel like all of this is connected in terms of our behavior as human beings in this in this society and the type of behavior that's that's rewarded. You know, this is the kind of stuff that's rewarded. People who act like an ass get their 15 minutes of fame. They get the reality TV show. They get paid. They get the spotlight. So what does that yeah. do? That encourages yeah. more of that stuff. You know, and so what what kind of society are we, we, we build in? more narcissistic, more selfish, more, you know. Yeah, I mean, everybody you see what's wants that attention yeah, man. For, for whoever they got to get it, and maybe not good attention. Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see what, what, what people have to say about this in response to the pod, because uh, I'm sure there'll, there'll be different, different points of view on this. But um, I just, I like the story because it, it hits just so many different aspects of kind of the, the human experience in our society today, so. Yeah, I noticed sometimes there's no mercy for for athletes. Uh, no. So we'll we'll see <laughs> if uh, yeah. our stance is is agreed with or not. Yeah, but what about this hitman man? What do you, what's going on with this? Oh right, I'm yeah, going so, to school so, to get a degree in, in in hitology or something. Yeah, man. <laughs> let me let me talk about this. this. This one, I see this this headline, and it's F, FBI rent a hitman site nabs air national guardsman who was excited to kill i said i gotta click on this one so the the lowdown 21 year old air national guardsman josiah ernesto garcia applied for hitman work on the got three names man you you know that's a bad three 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 names (laughs) three three names satirical rentahitman.com website and later agreed to kill a fictional abusive husband in exchange for five thousand dollars that's how much money someone's life was worth five thousand and so uh uh, garcia he was looking for money looking for extra money and apparently a friend of his in the air national guard suggested that he look for mercenary work so then garcia googles mercenary work hitman work (laughs) and and comes up with the rent a hitman.com website but here's the thing let me sign up my resume man let me out there (laughs) yeah see what what can i do oh i know what can i do what skills do i got (laughs) there any work for hitman oh man so uh, he 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 finds a site which again is a satirical site which is fake and he does not realize this he submits <laughs> <laughs> submits an employment inquiry and and then indicating he was interested in obtaining employment as a hitman. I'm like, oh my god! He indicated he was an expert marksman and employed in the Air National Guard since July 2021. And well, get this: his his resume said his nickname was Reaper. Oh, and, and that it was earned from military experience and marksmanship. Now, Reaper, uh, you know, you know, he gave himself this nickname. Come on. Wait, um, he was in the National Guard. But I mean, did he serve like active duty military before that's, that? That's what I'm saying. I was looking this up and trying to find out. Wait a minute. I'm thinking Air National Guard. He didn't really see any action. And so it, it's it's possible he was indeed, you know, a marksman. He could have he could have, you know, won. And some kind of expert status. Or maybe that. he was like, uh, you know, level 1000 on Call of Duty or some shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same thing, right? <laughs> Same you thing, know? baby. Same thing. Well, well okay. The, the resume said he was recognized as an expert marksman for not missing a single bullseye on all of the targets and for, sh- and for a shooting expert with two or more weapons. Wow. So, so then... 
he says uh, that he would be comfortable torturing victims and taking oh trophies <laughs> such as fingers or ears. He's just letting them know what he's willing to do. Hey, <laughs> you know, he said he had an AR-15 rifle and he accepted an envelope with 2500 in cash as a down payment for killing the abusive husband. After agreeing to the terms of the murder arrangement, Garcia asked the agent, the FBI agent, if he needed to provide a photograph of the dead body. I mean, this dude was being thorough, man. He's like, you, you want me to get a video? You want me to get a, a photo? Like, holy crap. So then the FBI agent is trying to give him ways to back out of this, right? And is asking, hey, are you really okay with this? And Garcia said that he had weighed the psychological effects of killing someone and he was okay with it. Man. So, I mean, okay, now I, I have a quote, just a, a block from the, from the article that I have to read, which is very interesting. Okay, and it goes, Garcia stated that he would prefer to work in another state, but is okay to kill some local people. Um, <laughs> then the, the, the undercover it told Garcia that if he were to kill 50 people, he would make a large amount of money. And Garcia responded, that's rookie numbers for the Reaper. And <laughs> <laughs> I killed 5,000 people on Call of Duty, man. He's like, dude, you not know who I am? I'm the Reaper. Uh, maybe I have to say it again. <laughs> so, I mean, so then, okay, so eventually, of course, he was busted. Then he he tried to tell the agents after he was, after he was busted that he had second thoughts about the hitman job, and it changed his mind. And he got a job offer from Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I'm like, wow, this is just the guy I want working at I the know, University sure. Medical Center, the Reaper. <laughs> uh, so, so, okay, then this criminal charge could put Garcia in prison for up to 10 years if he's convicted. I, I want to talk about the site itself, right? Uh -huh. the, the site itself, Rent a Hitman, it was made, uh, I, I, I forgot the guy's name, I should have put that in my notes, but I didn't. But anyway, he was a, a website coder and he was looking to earn some extra money and he made the rent a hitman site, but he meant as in web hits, SEO, getting hits to oh your website. Oh my God, you joking. <laughs> no, no, that, <laughs> that is what he meant. And sure enough, um, he started getting contacts from people looking to actually hire hitmen, which he you know, ignored and laughed at until some of them started to look very real. Oh Lord! In which he Lord. contacted the FBI. Help us, Lord, help us. <laughs> so, so let me tell you something. So, this website, it's it's got a. Um, it says Guido Finelli and family. Guido is the, the name they put up. Have operated mm. Rent a Hitman continuously since 1920, and it says HIPAA, H I P A A, the Hitman Information Privacy and Protection Act of 1964 protects all your data. So, this guy believed this stuff. Gar Garcia came here. He's, he saw, oh, Hitman Information Privacy and Protection Act? Oh, great. It's like, who, who passed the Hitman Information Privacy and Protection Act? Congress? They were they're like, we got to protect the rights of these hitmen. So, so then he's got some, he's got some uh, testimonials here. Like Fernando M. from Kansas. My business schedule is too busy to get my hands dirty with human resources issues. So I consulted with Rent a Hitman and they handled my disgruntled employee issue promptly while I was out of town on vacation. Gracias, Rent a Hitman. And then Laura S. from Arizona caught my husband cheating with the babysitter and our relationship was terminated after a free public relations consultation. I'm single again and looking to mingle. Thanks, Guido. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> This whole website seemed like a bad idea, but okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I went there. I went to the website. It's very well made. And I actually went to the uh, the form where it's asking you to fill it out if you're looking for a hitman. And it again, it's very well made. You put in all the information and it, it looks like any type of you know regular web form. I think it's interesting that he keeps, the, the owner of the site keeps working with it in, in tangent, in tandem with the FBI. Like, if it was me, I would have jumped the fuck back and told the FBI, you guys take this. I don't need to be a part of this in any way. But yeah, he, he's, he's potentially making some some crazy enemies, right? Yeah. So this this Garcia, 
I mean, for $5,000, he's willing to kill someone. And is this who's in the Air National Guard? Incredible that he, I, I just found the thing so cold and he was so callous. Yeah, I'm willing to take fingers and ears and how many people was he willing to kill? He's just, holy crap. And I think sometimes these people, maybe he got into the Air National Guard and he thought that he was going to become a badass and he he wanted this in his life. He wanted to be Jason Bourne or one of these guys. I don't know. It's just, wow, some, something's missing in that guy that he could just so callously. And then he there was parts where he was, he wasn't responded to quick enough from the site. And he kept emailing the site saying, put me in coach. I'm ready. And he wanted his first assignment to go kill someone. Yeah, man. Just amazing. We in trouble, man. <laughs> As human beings, we we are in some deep, deep trouble. Um, yeah. Damn. Because this is this is just. A, I mean, he's he was in the Air National Guard, but this is just a, this is just a random average dude, really, right? So we got eight billion people on the planet. How many of these we got? You know what I mean? Like, what's yeah. the percentage of crazy people? And it's not just guys. You know, I, I mean, maybe primarily guys trying to be hitmen, but. You know, just just the kind of terrible things that people are willing to do to each other. Uh, I don't know what society's producing, man. Well, like, and wow. he he was saying he had a baby on the way. I need extra money. I have a baby on the way. I know. I'll kill people. Let me let me clap <laughs> a couple couple folks by that crib. <laughs> yeah. What? Um, and so he was in the Air National Guard since since 2021. And is that is that long enough to become you know? International hitman badass, don't you? Wait, wait, wait. Was, was he, he's, he was currently in the Air National Guard while he was trying to do his hitman shit on the side? It only says that he was employed in the Air National Guard. So I assume he was still in it, maybe on leave or something. Well, well, the, the National Guard is like a, a one weekend a month type of deal, right? So most people have a full-time job doing something else. And then the National Guard is like, you know what I'm saying? They, they got a one weekend a month type of responsibility. Now, sometimes people who have served in the active duty military, right, um, may retire from that and then move over to the National Guard and do that on a, more, on a full-time basis. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was kind of looking it up, like, because I heard National Guard, and then I thought, okay, this, this is very specifically saying Air National Guard. So yeah. he's from the Air, the Air Force. Right. Um, some sort of reserve of the Air Force under their um, purview, I guess. But wow, I mean, they're not really, this, this is who's in there. Somebody who's, first of all, not very smart. And then secondly, just cold and completely without empathy. Well, listen, um, it's an interesting topic because whether you're talking about, mil now I know the military screens to try to, you know, keep out certain uh, psychological types, right? But whether it's the military or the police force, you also have to understand they want people who are willing to follow orders. And sometimes that means taking <clears throat> violent action, right? So it's, it's going to be a certain type of person, um, not in all cases, but, you know, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna scoop up a certain type of people in, into those kind of groups as well. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not it's not totally like out of the realm of 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 reasoning and, and logical understanding why some of these things happen, like with the police, you know, killing all these brothers, um, you know, in these shootings. It's like, damn, man, you 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 had to kill him. I mean, he was he was in the car with his seatbelt on and his hands on the yeah. steering wheel. You, you had to shoot him. That's that's what you had to do. He was running away from you with nothing in his hands. You had to kill him. That's that's right. So it's like not, you know. We all probably have family members or friends or whatever who are who are in or been in the police force or military. So I'm not, you know, I respect all those guys. But at the same time, there's 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 bad apples in there. Um, and I guess what I'm saying is some of these organizations, it's not that they want the bad apples, but they need certain type of people too. You know what I'm saying? So there's more of this guy than 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 we probably want to admit, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, they, they might be necessary given the world we find ourselves in at some point. But yeah, this this guy, I mean, hey, he just bought himself 10 years. I, I just got to believe 
that he's going to get the full ride because it's just so callous what he was willing to do. Well, and he accepted the money. So I think that's the money. Yeah. yeah, That's um, now they didn't, they didn't set it up where he actually, you know, went to a location or anything like that. Right. No, no. He met the, he met the agent. It looks like he met the agent twice. He got 2,500 as a down payment. And then he said he was going to return the 2,500 at the next meeting. That's after he got caught. He claims that he was going to, oh. he was only came to return it, not to get the rest of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And then he waves think. his Miranda rights. So not the, not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Well, that reminds me of a story that I saw on like one of them TV shows. It's kind of like, what do you call it? Like American Greed or one of those, you know, one of those kind of like docudrama type of joints. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. This chick hired an FBI agent. She didn't know he was an FBI agent to uh, to murder her husband so she could get the insurance money and shit like that. And um, so they played it out as if they actually killed him. You know what I mean? Oh, and wow. They, they went the whole they, way. Yeah, they went the whole way with it. Like, well, they they told her like, 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 OK, it's done. It's done. You know, so they, they had her all kinds of entrapped. I forget exactly how it all um, came out. But at a certain point, they came, I don't think they were in the same physical room necessarily, but they came face to face and she, she realized her husband wasn't dead. And he knew, I mean, ima- imagine that your wife ha- tried to have you killed, man. Not just anger, not just daydream about it. She planned, plotted, paid for it, and, and saw the thing through to have you murdered, dog. And the only thing that stopped was she she went to an FBI agent. That she went to, an, she, she happened yeah. to, to, to you know, fall into one of the FBI traps. And, and how uh, does how does that conversation go? You're, you're accosted by the FBI and they'll be like, hey, uh, you know, sorry, we got to tell you that your wife is trying to have you killed. You like, what? Yeah, or, 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 or depending on the marriage, you'd be like, ah, it's just a Tuesday, man. You know, come on. Yeah. So, so uh, for all of our fans, man, stay tuned for our next podcast. We're going to be getting into the, the decline of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mur- murder might be one of the reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could Lord. very well be. Yeah, so, well, I, th- I think on this one, I think we should uh, we should we should wrap it up because uh, Garcia is definitely going to jail. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that out there. He's he's not uh, sentenced yet, but come on, he's out of here. Hey, and, wait, uh, I, have a, I have a question though. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask the question that I think a lot of our our, our, our fans or our followers are gonna gonna want to know. I mean. Is it just a coincidence that we talk about the Hitman story and Ebony Blade in here today? Is it just a coincidence? Mm, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, we, we had to see if Ebony Blade turns back up. If he don't never come back, no. then... <laughs> is, is, he, is he on the run? Or? He might be on the run. <laughs> hey, I just want to let everyone know. I, I don't know anything about anything. I don't know anything about anything. Nope, nope. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> okay, now I'm really getting out of here. On, on that yeah, note, man. let's wrap it up, you guys. And and, and uh, everybody out there, we're gonna we're gonna take off. And if you guys like this show, please please like and share and subscribe it and leave us comments. Let us know what you thought about it. Make sure to hit up our Instagram, and uh, we'll see you out there. So let's say goodbye. Peace. Peace, family.